So, here we have an extra half plane and a jock can form over here and this can move. So, if I had to visualize it, this is how it would look like. So, here one jog has formed, then this jog moves like this and eventually it forms like this. Again, uh, another jog would form somewhere else, it would move like this and it will keep moving. So, it will ensure that this dislocation line overall moves up. So, we are not even talking about one whole slip plane moving simultaneously, only a small jog or a small step in, in it is uh, actually uh, getting formed and that then spreads apart to allow the dislocation line to move. And again this is if you remember again from our uh, discussion for glide where kinks were formed, this need not be just one step by one step, there is nothing that will govern that it will have to be one line at a time. It can actually be more like something like this. So, there will be jogs, uh, there will be jogs at some places which will keep moving up and there will be some side dislocations which we, whose character we will see in a moment and they will keep moving in the other sides. Another view to look at it would be like this. So, let us draw it on the plane. So, let us say this is one dislocation line that has to move and it may form a jog like this. Where was the Berger vector for this? If you remember the Berger vector for this is a, this is a edge dislocation. So, Berger vector is like this. Here the line vector is like this. Here the line vector is like this. So, this is the line vector this is the line vector, this is the line vector. So, in this particular case, what do we see when a jog is formed on a screw dislo uh, sorry on a edge dislocation, what will be the characteristics for this one? So, let us say this is u 1, u 2, u 3. So, what is the characteristics of u 1? u 1 is still a edge dislocation because the Berger vector is perpendicular to it. So, this is a edge dislocation. What about u 2? u 2 is over here also, it is the Berger vector is perpendicular. So, it is a edge dislocation. What about u 3? This is also a edge dislocation. Now, if you remember edge dislocation has a higher energy than a screw dislocation. So, again having a mixed character would ensure that the energy is minimized. So, in reality what you would get is something like this. A rounded character. So, this is how the extra half plane would look like and to ensure that you visualize it properly, let me draw the other part of it. So, this is the extra half plane and somewhere over here there are different uh, layers where jog has formed. So, somewhere the same what I was trying to show over here, but only now that we are doing it with rounded edges meaning these are mixed character. Okay, so, now that we have understood so much about climb, let us uh, note down some important understanding that we get here. What we understand here is that both positive and negative climb proceed by nucleation and motion of jog. So, somewhere a jog must be created 
and once that jog has been created that jog will spread apart or move apart and it will lead to dislocation climbing. So, for example, if you look at uh, this particular these are edge dislocations. So, which will be the movement of edge dislocations they will move along this direction and once and when they move it will move like this they will cause the dislocation to climb up. Conversely, we can say jogs are we said earlier also sources and sinks for vacancies. And since vacancies are involved then this becomes a thermal process and therefore, climb is critical at high temperature. So, processes like creep etcetera involve uh, involve climb or a climb is more critical in understanding the process of process like creep etcetera. So, now we have two components or two different steps two different things that we have looked at one is kinks the other are jogs. Kinks help in glide, jogs help in climb or in other words kinks are steps that displace dislocation line on same slip plane. Okay, so, that is the more critical differentiation on the other hand jogs are also steps that move dislocation from one slip plane to another. Okay, so, now let us uh, understand uh, or let us do the comparison also uh, by some diagram with the help of some figures. So, let us say we have So, we are trying to draw step uh, step formed on one side which leads to the formation of edge dislocation and now that edge dislocation has a step which is the kink. So, let us say this is this is the edge dislocation that we are looking at from one side and this is the plane. Now, over here this will be the so there is a step here and over here. So, this this is the region or let me draw it with a different color so that the difference is so this is the step that we have over here and in this particular case if you remember this uh, this is the Berger vector would be along this direction and this line vector is also in this direction. So, the character of this is should be the Berger vector and line vector are in the same direction. So, it should the, this character of the king should be screw. Now, let us look at the uh, kink that is formed due to a screw uh, uh, due to a screw dislocation so let's what i'm trying to show here is a step that has been formed because of the presence of a screw dislocation and 
there is also a step involved here, step in the screw dislocation. So, we can see that there is a ledge on this side, a ledge on this side there must be a screw dislocation, but at the same time this ledge is larger, this ledge is smaller. So, there must be also a step and in the slip plane. So, we will try to draw this which is a screw dislocation and the step I will draw in the red color. So, here okay, so let me write that this is step is which is red is screw here the step what will be the character of this. So, for that first we need to know the Berger vector the Berger vector was originally like this and this is 90 degrees perpendicular to it therefore, this step must be edge in character. So, we have seen that this is a originally it is a edge dislocation and the step here is screw originally it is a screw dislocation and the step here is edge. Now, let us look at jog how will be how will they be different. So, let us draw the jogs. So, again here we have step that has to be formed, but the step will also be climbing at certain position there would be a climb in the step. So, let me try to draw this climb in the step. So, here I have drawn a step. So, this as you can see since there is a ledge there must be a uh, edge dislocation uh, sorry as screw dislocation involved, but at the same time uh, sorry this is the edge dislocation involved, but at the same time there is a step rising which means that this edge dislocation must be climbing up at certain position. So, we will show that with this So, there is a edge dislocation which is moving like this and this is like this and which then, but there is discontinuity and hence there is a step involved. Now, for this step what is the Berger vector or for the whole first let us describe the Berger vector for the whole thing. Now, remember the, uh, keep that in mind always that Berger vector will not change for a dislocation whether we are talking about steps or a continuous loop of a dislocation. So, the Berger vector for the dislocation would also describe the Berger vector of the step. So, here the Berger vector is like this line vector is like this therefore, what should be the character? The character for this should be edge. So, what we have here is a edge dislocation. Now, what we want so this is a jog remember that on the left side we have all the kinks on the right side what we are drawing is the jogs. So, in the jogs for a edge dislocation is also a edge dislocation. Next we want to draw the jog for a screw dislocation. So, again we have to draw ledge which is like screw in character. So, this is the ledge which is screw in character and, but this ledges are not on the same plane which means that this has been moved up or down from its plane depending on whether you started from the bottom side or whether you started from the
So, here is a ledge and let me now draw the uh, line for the screw dislocation. So, the screw dislocation line would go like this, the screw dislocation line would go like this and there is a mismatch over here which is, which is a step although this in this particular drawing it has come out to be much larger, but the steps would not be so large usually. And what is the original Berger vector? Since it is a screw dislocation, the Berger vector is like this. And what is the line vector for this? This is parallel to this. Therefore, what is the character? This character of the step is edge. So, in three of the cases, we are getting step as a edge, uh, step has an edge character. And only in one particular case, the step has a screw character. Now, there are few more things to look at when you have a, uh, when I have drawn it something like this. Now, let us try to understand it with respect to the motion. So, the earlier the dislocations were trying to move in this particular direction. So, because uh, the slip has taken place over here. So, it will move out over here creating a step over here. Similarly, in this particular case all of them they will lead to a formation of a step like this step on this side and with a negative step on the other side that is the final stage. Now, in that particular case, let us see the steps that have formed are going to help or not. Usually, you can imagine that for glide, we get kink and the kink is helping in glide. So, in that particular case, glide would be enhanced when there is a kink formation, but jogs are formed for climb. What we are looking at is glide motion of the dislocation. So, the jogs would not really always help in some cases it may help, but not always help in uh, the glide of the dislocation that what that is what we will see here. But before that it will be easy, uh, it will be good if we can uh, recall some of some of the things that we had discussed earlier regarding edge dislocation and screw dislocation. So, what do we know about u and b remember that it is perpendicular for the edge dislocation it is parallel for a screw dislocation. What about the slip direction? Slip direction is parallel to B. So, uh, slip direction by uh, B in other words does determine or define the slip direction. So, in both cases it is parallel to B, but when it comes to motion as you know that in one, uh, one of the dislocation which is edge is perpendicular to B and screw dislocation is parallel to B. So, the motion would be different with respect to B motion of dislocation. This will be parallel to B, this will be perpendicular to B. Okay. So, this, uh, these are some of the things that we will uh, use when we are again looking at this diagram again. Another thing to keep in mind is that about Berger vector. remains constant keep these things in mind and then you will be able to see how the motion would be helped or impeded by the presence of these steps. Now, let us look at the step the screw dislocation over here the screw dislocation is uh, the Berger vector for this is in this direction and therefore, the movement of dislocation would take place. Now, let me use a cyan color. So, it the dislocation would if the, if the right stresses are applied this dislocation would move over there and hence it will lead to overall displacement of dislocation in the right direction. So, it will aid aid in glide and this is expected over here this is the edge dislocation. So, it will move parallel to B. So, it will move like this and it will cause the whole screw dislocation to advance in this direction. So, this will advance like this which will ensure that the overall screw dislocation is moving like this. And in fact, if I had to draw this, so I would also say the overall edge dislocation is moving like this. So, here also step aids in glide. Now, over here what we have is edge dislocation this is the Berger vector. So, it will move parallel to Berger vector. So, the parallel meaning in the same direction it can be positive or negative depending on the kind of shear stress that is being applied. So, this overall would move like this and hence the overall edge dislocation would move like this. So, this also aids in glide. Now, 
this uh, let us look at the fourth case where we have the screw dis uh, where we have the screw dislocation and we have a jog in this screw dislocation. So, this jog has a uh, edge character. So, this is the Berger vector is like this. So, this particular jog can only move in these two directions. So, it can either move like this or like this, but what we wanted was the screw dislocation to move like this. So, is this helping is the movement of this edge step leading or aiding in any ways to the movement of the screw dislocation and the answer is no. In fact, it would happen something uh, opposite of this, it will pin the dislocations. So, it uh, in, a, in other words you can say that it restricts glide. So, in the three cases the presence of uh, steps have allowed or made this uh, glide easier, but in the in one of the cases where there is a jog which is actually a formed by climb it does not aid in glide. So, this is uh, also something that we are able to understand when we look at these diagrams. So, when, when I say pin the dislocation, so let me explain it in a little bit better diagram. So, why does it get pinned? So, let us say this is the dislocation and uh, I will now have to use even another color. So, this, this, this particular this is the plane in which this edge dislocation can move, but the screw dislocation because of the stress that is being applied will move in this direction and therefore, if we let me just draw a guide line. So, this, this screw dislocation would eventually move like this, this would move like this and this particular region would remain pinned. So, you can see that how this particular presence of this uh, step is restricting the motion or the glide motion not all the motion the glide motion. If we were looking at uh, the climb then obviously, this uh, jog will aid in climb, but as far as uh, glide is concerned then this does restrict the glide motion of this particular dislocation. So, now that we have looked at glide and climb in so much detail it is time that we solve some example with respect to this. So, let us come and solve some example and these are simple example most more or less based on what we have already uh, discussed in one of these uh, lectures. So, what you are given is that this is a edge dislocation and is a sharp we will assume sharp steps over here and again you are given that this plane is 1 1 1. You are given that this is a pure edge dislocation from here uh, this part and this part. So, let us say this is u 1 this is u 2, this is u 3, this is u 4, this is u 5. So, these are the 5 uh, parts with so based on this uh, since it is oriented such it is given that u 1, u 3, u 5 are pure edge dislocations. with Berger vector it is also given that the Berger vector is a by 2. For now ignore the a by 2 part we will come to that when we discuss more about uh, FCC and BCC we just imagine that the we are trying to say the direction of the Berger vector which is 1 bar 1 0. So, for a FCC system that should become obvious given the direction the slip direction. Now, what you have to find is what are the values of u 1, u 2, u 3, 
u 4 u 5 and you have to say whether what you are getting here is a kink or a jog. Okay. So, let us start to solve this problem and let us solve it from part b because part b as you would realize is very easy. Uh, we have to first find out whether it is a kink or a jog. Now, if you remember we said kink is a step formed in the slip plane. Now, if you look at this is the slip plane formed and the way it has been drawn all these are all edges are in the slip plane implies this is a kink. Okay. So, this is uh, the this part has been answered. Now, let us look at how to solve u 1, u 2, u 3, u 4, u 5 etcetera. So, you are given Berger vector is equal to a by 2 1 bar 1 0. Now, if the Berger vector is given and it is a pure edge dislocation, this would mean that this Berger vector must be oriented like this perpendicular to the line. Now, so the line vector u is perpendicular to Berger vector, but at the same time it is also perpendicular to the normal to the plane, which means that u 1 should be equal to cross product of Berger vector and 1 1 1, which means it should be 1 bar 1 0 and still using the notation of direction and plane and you can do it mathematically or just by intuition you can see that it should come out to 1 1 bar 2. So, now you can cross check 1 1 bar 2 if you take a dot product with 1 1 1 is 0. So, it lies on the 1 1 1 plane 1 bar 1 0 dot 1 bar 1 1 bar 2 you can take a dot product and you can see that it is 0. So, it is must be perpendicular. So, there can be only one direction which is perpendicular to both because we are in a 3D world here x y and z. So, if uh, it this particular plane is perpendicular to both 1 1 1 and Berger vector it can define only one unique direction. So, that is u 1 if this is u 1 then it would mean that it is also equal to this is parallel to u 5 and it is also equal to u 3. So, now we know the line vector for u 1, u 5 and u 3. Now, what is remaining? What is remaining is u 2 which is parallel to u 4. So, u 2 and u 4 are same. What is it? This equal to this is a now we have already mentioned that these are sharp corners meaning this is perpendicular to this line and what is perpendicular to this line? It is the Berger vector and we also know that from the uh, earlier understanding that this must be a screw dislocation although this is something we have to derive, but this is something we know that it is has to be a screw dislocation. So, it, the line line vector will be parallel to Berger vector. So, u 2 will be parallel to b. So, it is equal to 1 bar 1 0 and this is a screw dislocation. and this these are edge dislocation. So, we have seen that it is uh, so easy to solve this problem. Now, there is a related problem to this and over here to begin with what you are given is that uh, the, what you are given is a screw dislocation. So, you are not starting with a edge dislocation, but with a screw dislocation and the steps are also a little different it, uh, to look at. So, there is a screw dislocation and again what is given to you is that the Berger vector is a by 2 1 bar 1 0 and it is given to you that the normal of the plane is 1 1 1 and it is given to you that this is a screw dislocation. So, the first part is whether this step 
is kink or jog and second part is that you take u1, u2, u3, u4, u5. So, find u1, u2, u3, u4, u5. So, you solve it on your own if you are not able to do it. So, we will meet again in the next class.